Hello everyone and welcome back to International Space Station Construction and Kerbal Space Program with Realism Overhaul. We are beginning with STS-127 which is out of order. It was supposed to happen before STS-130 but we're doing it after because I didn't have the part for the station that goes up on this mission. Uh, this is the shuttle Endeavour carrying the Kibo Exposed Facility and uh, so that was a part that I got from a NASA model and adapted it for the game. Otherwise I didn't find a particularly good version of it. I sped up the launch uh, so that it's relatively real time for once since this is actually going to be the last video featuring the shuttle in this series. Uh, we will have another video that features Falcon 9 delivering beam but I'll get through the three remaining shuttle missions in this video. And so yep I decided that it would be a good idea to have the launch sequence at least sped up to some decent rate because of course it's always very laggy otherwise. Uh, so uh, Chris Cassidy who's currently the commander on the space station uh, actually was on this mission. I thought that was worth mentioning. Um, uh, otherwise I'll go through all the astronaut details and the details of the mission as it actually happened in a separate video that has all of the missions put together instead of the way I've been doing it. This is mo mainly about me talking about the way I conducted the missions rather than the way the missions actually happened. So here we are approaching the station uh, doing rendezvous burns as you can see with the OMS engines. So the Kibo exposed facility is actually sort of a docking port, a, a series of docking ports for scientific experiments uh, which are sort of in like CubeSat boxes, about CubeSat shaped boxes and those get attached to it. The NASA model had those boxes on but I had to take them off because otherwise it wouldn't fit inside the shell's cargo bay. All the boxes sort of make it bulky and so this model only has one on the tail end but I'll have to implement a way of... I guess we'd have to add docking ports to this and then be able to dock the boxes to it. We'd have to use Canadarm for that while well, Canadarm 2 on the station to, well, we need to put another arm is the problem. Actually, Kibo has its own arm to deal with the little boxes. So I need to add another arm to the station, actually. I forget if there's even a third arm, but yeah, definitely one to Kibo for moving the boxes around. The experiments. So here we go. Docking has gotten smoother, but it still requires immense precision. But there we go. And with a vehicle like the shuttle at that. Alright, so here we have my Canada tug. So for the first time, I'm actually using my own model for the tug. It's functionally... Well, in terms of Delta V, it's identical. It's got the same fuel and same thruster power and all that. But it has extendable RCS ports, which is an improvement. And also, they all count as one RCS system. So when I go to disable them or enable them, I just have to do one click. So that's handy. So here we go. Moving along. I did put a Canadian flag on it, but unfortunately that got covered up by the docking port. You know how the little uh, propellant-only docking ports have a fringe on them, the fringe covered up the Canadian flag. So, alas, a little bit of bad planning on my part. So the two tugs grabbing the Kibo Explosive Facility. There we go. But we actually need to do a Kerbal EVA to make this happen because there's no docking port for this on the Kibo module. I didn't expect to be able to do this part when I set up the Kibo module. So, out we go with the Kerbal, and the Kerbal couldn't actually get out of the shuttle directly. It kept saying that it was obstructed, hatch obstructed, so we had to send the Kerbal into the quest airlock to get the Kerbal out. And this is Bill. Uh, so Bill gets his tool, and then we have a spare little docking port there for him to grab and place on Kibo in the correct location, or at least where I think the correct location is. So here we go, he's gonna do sort of a flyby drilling. <laughs> so that's where we're going to put the Kibo module, the Kibo exposed facility. And 
Bill enjoys the view for a sec, and then heads back to the quest airlock. And so now we get to use the tugs to do their thing, they orient in the same direction as the docking port. Uh, the docking port on this is sort of tucked into that cylindrical portion, so the cylindrical portion doesn't have a collider, it'll just clip into the body of Kibo. That seemed to be how it was on the model too, I don't know how it is in actuality, but in the model it was actually clipped into the Kibo. So here we go. It's not a very heavy module, of course. And you can see uh, those gray uh, round portions on the side of it are the little docking ports for the science experiments. Or docking locations, we don't actually have the ports there yet. I started to get the tugs back into the cargo bay, but then realized that, or was reminded by the viewing audience, since this was all done during live streams on Twitch, that I needed to deal with PMA3, and PMA3 is currently in the wrong location, so I try and grab it with my little tug. Now, trying to move the PMA around with just one tug previously was not a good thing to do, so gotta send the second tug over. PMA3 isn't going to end up where it finally ends up, which is on top of Harmony. Uh, it starts out on the port berthing mechanism of Unity, then it's moved to Harmony to make way for Tranquility, and then after that it's moved back to Tranquility, which is where we're putting it here, and then finally the canned arm moves it from Tranquility back to Harmony, uh, to the top of Harmony. But uh, yeah, we'll do that part later. I don't know why they needed to put it on Unity in the first place. I mean, they could have just kept it on Harmony the whole time, is all I'm saying. Uh, but they'd have to, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know why they had to move it all over the place when it could have just been on top of Harmony, but whatever. Uh, maybe it was, uh, you know what, it was probably because of the shuttle's arm. It was probably because they needed to be able to use the shuttle's arm, and then once the shuttle retired, they didn't need to, so they put it back over to Harmony. That's probably what it was. All right, so the shuttle is coming back. And this time, I'm hoping that the script is all right, but the problem here is actually my own fault. Uh, timing the shuttle's return is going to be the problem, and that leads us to be too far north in this case. So if we see Tampa Bay to the right there, that's a little bit too far north. And I just need to make sure that we line up with Cape Canaveral properly when we return. And so I take control from the KOS script a little bit earlier than I'm supposed to and try to do a very sharp turn. It's tough to try and make the shuttle turn at these altitudes. I eventually use the OMS thrusters. This is actually high enough for them to do something, but they're fighting against a lot of drag anyway, so it's more or less to make the shuttle lighter. And ultimately, I really, really stretch it. <laughs> I, I do some serious gliding as much as I can. It's not the w most wonderful glider. As you can see, we're descending and slowing down. But there is the runway. So we're getting closer. But yeah, actually I think one of the reasons why the shuttle took so long to rendezvous with the space station was actually to time the return. And so what I do is I actually uh, do all that time warping after the space station uh, visit. But probably they did it right up front, and that's how it worked out. So that's whenever you see how long the space shuttle took to rendezvous with the International Space Station. It's probably to do with actually coming back, partly at least. Of course they want to save fuel and everything, but that is also a consideration. So anyway, moving right along, here we have STS-132, the shuttle Atlantis bringing up RASFIT, or MRM-1. RASFIT, the model, does not look quite as crisp as the ones that are otherwise in the community ISS pack, which is what I'm mostly using 
to build the International Space Station. There are some parts from CX Aerospace, but it's mostly the old Community ISS pack. And that thread is still on the forums. Uh, it's Bobcat Space uh, something or another. Uh, just look for Bobcat. It's, it's that thread. Uh, so it's a long thread with a whole lot of parts going on. And right at the bottom, there's community, community ISS. It's easy to miss, but it's in the Bobcat Space Products thread. And you're, you're going to have to do some work on it, <laughs> I have to say. It, uh, it's not going to be easy making it compatible or making everything work out. Among the problems is some of the parts have collider issues, which is why I use CX Aerospace for those. Like the Z1 truss was particularly problematic. But in 1.8.1 they have shader issues as well, because they're so old that they were, uh, they were using a different version of Unity with completely different shaders. And so in 1.8.1 they won't look right. At some point I'll show you what it looks like in 1.8.1. Unfortunately, I began this series three years ago, so I don't remember all the things that I had to do to make the parts work. I do remember resizing some and changing the mass of some and because they had the wrong mass. Uh, for instance, there are two pieces of truss that go on the shell at the same time, I think P3, P4. They were each 15 tons instead of combined being 15 tons, stuff like that. There's Rasfit in the bay there. And so here our tug is bringing it out. It's not bad or anything, it's just not quite at the same level as some of the other parts that come with the pack. Um, I am tempted to try and make a newer version of the ISS based on the NASA model of it. For that though, I don't think it'll be as good as the Bobcat ones because I'm crap at texturing. And also the interiors might be a bit of a problem. I'll probably just use existing uh, KSP interiors from the stock game rather than trying to make my own, which wouldn't be as good. But yeah, so I mean, complicated issues, but at the same time, there are plenty of ISS mods out there. So it might be better just to adapt those for realism overhaul. If they haven't already been adapted, it's possible that there's already another realism overhaul compatible ISS but I don't know if they look as good. I haven't done a comparison. So there we go. We got the Rasfit module on and the tugs get back into the bay. Rasfit is a very light payload, so there wasn't much of a fuss. And now the question, of course, is can we get back home? Oh, we need to turn off the RCS thrusters on the tugs. But again, now it's just a one-click thing for each of them instead of me having to turn off four ports on each of them. So yeah, we need to see if we can get back a little bit more accurately, timing our return properly. And this is really a matter of me keeping track of time, so it's like, you know, uh, comparing to a one and a half orbit reference point, you know, are we a few seconds ahead, a few seconds behind, a few minutes ahead? Once we're at the station, we're about two and a half minutes uh, too long. So we have to compensate for that. We could wait until the next orbit over. So you could just uh, kill an hour and a half. So you're in a two and a half hour orbit and you need to kill a whole orbit before getting back, which amounts to like three days or something like that. So it's a whole bunch of timing stuff like that. And of course you want to time it without using too much fuel, right? Uh, you could time it easier if you could just go into any old orbit, uh, like a much higher orbit. But you don't want to do that, you don't have that much fuel, so uh, you need to figure it out with a uh, bit more efficiency. Here we are over Tampa Bay, so that's good-ish, but still a bit north of the KSC there, you can see. I tried to let the script go as long as possible. We never do get to the point where it naturally hands over to me where it's supposed to. I take control each time to make sure that we get to where we need to go. And so after letting it do the pitch down there, I decide to abort the script and take control. Otherwise it would take too long and it'd get too slow and at that point I don't think we would have been able to maneuver to get back. 
So here we go, once again using as much glideability as I can. Not really able to assess glide ratio right now because we're both slowing down and going down. Glide ratio is supposed to be analyzed when you're at a constant speed, but it just keeps slowing down once you're descending. I ultimately had to kill velocity though because we were going too fast. I kept too much speed going in, which is better than having too little, of course. We don't have the split rudder air brakes, so I just have to do sort of S turns ahead of time. Not the ideal situation, but if it works, it works. And um, hope, uh, in 1.8.1, the split rudder works. Well, at least it opens. I don't know if it actually produces much drag or not. Haven't tested that out yet. Uh, but okay, we are on the ground. And we have the drogue chute. And we are on the runway for the second time in this video. So things are going well, getting better. And here we have STS-133, the Shuttle Discovery, bringing up the Leonardo module, which uh, was a converted MPLM, a multi-purpose logistics module, that became a permanent fixture on the station. The multi-purpose logistics modules were basically sort of a resupply things that the shuttle carried, but then they decided to stick one onto the station permanently. Here we go for booster separation, and this will be the last shuttle mission for this series. So there they go. So there is a new version of this shuttle for KSP 1.8.1 that has been adapted by Dylan Simro in the same thread that I posted in the video on how to install the shuttle in KSP 1.8.1. Uh, this a new version may have some fixes, uh, we'll see. I tried it out, but it seems to have some problems with the realism overhaul configurations that I have. I've fixed some of the problems, including part, uh, part location problems, because the um, configurations that I have were expecting to point to one folder, and actually the stuff is in another folder, and I still have the yaw issue. Uh, no, sorry, not the yaw issue that was in this. The roll issue. It has a roll issue in 1.8.1. And I think that has to do with the vertical stabilizer. I'm not sure. Uh, it's Yaw and pitch are easy to figure out. Um, but the roll is not. So I'm puzzled by the roll issue, but it still has that. And I'll see about that. So testing in KSP 1.8.1 is ongoing. But for this series, this will be the final docking. With the shuttle, at least. And as usual, it's a touchy business. There we go. All right. Before we get Leonardo out and rush through all this, I get a nice look at the station with the shuttle on. I do have to do Mir at some point. That's one of those things I have not done. Uh, Mir and the shuttle will look quite interesting. <laughs> the shuttle is huge, so yeah. Anyway, our little tugs go to work. Grab Leonardo, but Leonardo is actually the same mo uh, model as a previous module that we sent up, Columbus. It's basically the same as Columbus, and it's still sprung out of the shuttle cargo bay the same way. And so we need the tug to quickly get on with slowing it down. Fortunately, again, this direction is clear, so we're not going to bump into some module of the space station since it's done this thing. Always good to dock this way. And eventually the tug does manage to slow it down so that we can get the other tug to help. I did end up using this model for Columbus, even though the Community ISS pack does seem to have a Columbus model in the folder but I didn't see it in the part list, so maybe it's one of those things where the part is misnamed or pointing in the wrong place or something like that. I'll have to check. Anyway, out goes our tug in the increasingly complete station. Actually, this will be the final uh, module that is currently on the ISS that was originally planned for the ISS. There is still beam, 
but that wasn't part of the original plan. There's also Nauka, but that's not on there yet. So here we go. We are maneuvering. This isn't too hard a docking at all. But unfortunately, there is a trick. You see, this is not its final location. So we're going to dock it here. And for reasons I don't understand, they ultimately decided to move it to Tranquility. And so we need to move it over from, from Unity to Tranquility. And here on Tranquility, it'll be on the opposite side from Beam. So Beam will be on the other side. So, docking this on. Now, overall, the station is actually less mass than it really is. The reason for that is we don't have all the stuff that they brought up for the interior, aside from just sending up the modules. They've got all sorts of supplies, all sorts of equipment. There are also other equipment boxes on the trusses, if you see the space station, so none of that has been added on. There's plenty of stuff that we just haven't put on because they're either inside or smaller. And the interior stuff was brought up separately. And again, also supplies. Okay, uh, finally we also have to move PMA3 to its final location on Harmony, from the top of Harmony. And... To do that, I use both tugs. It's just safer that way. But when I connect both tugs together, for some reason, only one ends up being able to use its RCS unless I go to the tracking station and come back. Rear Nick mentioned something about a fix for that, but I don't know if that'll work in this version or I'll, I'll have to get the details from him at some point. But here we go. Approaching to dock. And there we have it. It would have been smart of me to leave a tug or two at the station, but they were sort of paired with the shuttle and brought back down with them throughout this whole thing. So we'll continue with that, and so Beam will involve using Canned Arm 2 for the first time in a long time. I will brave the use of that. And that'll be in the next video. This will be the conclusion of the shuttle part of the station construction and the regular part of the station construction as was planned. And here we are departing with Discovery. There are plenty of other things I want to do with the space shuttle and maybe I'll get to do those in 1.8.1, maybe I'll resort to doing them in 1.3.1 which is this version, we'll see. I am undecided about that yet. But I would like to run through all the shuttle missions in order, among other things. So that is an idea. So this time I did an even better job of trying to time it properly. Here the script is in charge of the retro burn. So again, the script is now only allowed to use roll to turn towards the KSC when it feels that it is um, too close to the KSC and needs to kill some speed and effectively uses it as also an S turn. Um, but otherwise, if it's uh, either just the right amount or too far away, it will not try and use roll to turn towards the KSC. So here, it's got enough margin, it feels. So there's an additional condition, basically. And we're once again over Tampa Bay, so that's a good sign. At least the previous times we've been able to get back properly. So this is good, and we are in fact closer than before. This allows me to leave the script to it for longer than I did last time. Does the pitch down, but ultimately I still take control a little bit earlier. It would have me control at 15 kilometers anyway, I think. But. I take it there and start doing my business to make sure that we get to the runway properly. And dumping fuel. And th at this altitude, that's just dumping fuel. And they probably wouldn't do it here, to be honest. Not, not over ground. Not at this altitude. Because that's some nasty stuff. 
and once again we need to kill some speed as we approach the runway. And approach for landing. And I'm off to the side. <laughs> oh, if only I could have done this a little bit better for the last one. And the drogue shoot. The drag shoot, actually. Drag shoot. And there we have it. I managed to land it three times in a row for once. And we have completed the regular construction of the station. So we just have to add beam and then we can go through some of the other things that have happened on the station. And going forward, I can do videos on current events at the station, for instance, like Dragon 2 arriving. And hopefully those will be sufficiently entertaining. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.